Guten Tag, and welcome to another edition of Ta Talk, where we take teaching theory and turn it into teaching practice. In keeping with our theme of raising the rigor, what we're going to be looking at today is the level of thinking and standards. For better or for worse, in the United States, we have content standards that students are responsible for learning and that teachers are responsible for teaching. In a lot of cases, these are the common core standards. So for English language arts and for math, most states have adopted the common core standards. And even if they haven't adopted those particular ones, they've created their own. For science, there's the next generation standards, which some states have adopted for science standards. And then most states are, are responsible for creating their own social studies standards. The question becomes, when you're teaching these content standards for mastery, are you teaching to the level of thinking that the content standard is asking? And that's what we're gonna take a look at today on how to look at a content standard to determine the level of thinking it's asking you to do. And then creating assessments or asking questions or lessons that are going to enable students to learn at this level that the content standard is asking of them. Usually when we look at content standards, we focus on the nouns of those standards. The nouns are the what of what should be taught. So this could be skills, this could be content, this could be facts, it could be you know topics, but the, this is the, the kind of the, the meat of what it is they're supposed to leave having mastered if they understand this content standard, that they have mastered whatever the noun is. Now, there are also verbs in the content standards, and the verb of the content standard is determining what level of thinking should students should be doing this particular skill or content or whatever at. Um, so it's setting the bar, the minimum bar for what students should be doing when they're learning this. So if you're learning about something that's on an analyzing level, the activities that you need to be setting up for students will require them to analyze so that they're learning this content standard at the proper level. Um, like I said, this is the minimum point from where students should be thinking. Oftentimes what I see is that teachers teach the noun, but not the verb. So they're teaching the noun, but if it's requiring a higher level at the verb, but they're teaching at a lower level of, of skill. And so we wanna make sure that the content standard and the thinking um, match up. And, and this, is, this is where this ties into the higher level questioning, is that the questions you're asking concerning these content standards also need to be asked at the level that the, the content standards is asking. So when you're assessing whether a student has mastered something, that the questions that you ask on your assessment or in your informal or whatever it is that you use to determine mastery should be at the, the minimum level of what the content standard is asking. So and one thing we could do is we could use Bloom's Taxonomy to help to figure out this range. I have a, another ta talk on Bloom's Taxonomy. Um, I have the link here, so this will give you an overview of Bloom's Taxonomy if you're not familiar with it, but I'm going to be referring that a lot with the, with the rest of this presentation. So if you're not familiar, you might want to watch that Todd talk. For example, here is a Common Core ELA standard. Write informative, explanatory text to examine and convey complex ideas, concepts, and information clearly and accurately through the effective selection, organization, and analysis of content. Wow, that's a mouthful, a lot going on there. When you pull out the verbs, what you see is there are actually three things going on here. It's asking you to write something. In this writing, it's asking you to examine something. And as part of that, you're also gonna be analyzing content. So all three of these levels of thinking must be accomplished in the lesson that you provide students and the assessment of what you give students. So. The levels of thinking are going to be creating, analyzing, and, an and analyzing, which are all higher level thinking uh, concepts. And so if you ask questions at a lower level that are only seeking to understand or to remember, you're not, you're not properly preparing students for uh, the content standard and for the, the, the um, test at the end of the year that they'll be accountable for. Common Core Math, here's an example of that. Use data from a random sample to draw inferences about a population with an unknown characteristic of interest. Generate multiple samples or simulated samples of the same size to gauge the variation in estimates or predictions. Again, a lot going on here. When you look at this, 
the verbs, though, it's asking you to use data to make inferences and to generate samples. So those are the three levels. And so this is asking you to analyze with the using and inferencing and then creating with the generating. So you're creating your own. So again, if you're teaching this content standard, are you having students actually physically generate samples? Because uh, that's what the content standard is calling for. Um, a teacher may be focusing just on the noun about the idea of population and how populations work. Um, but you have to be making, you have to make sure that you are teaching to the, the, the verb and the level of thinking that it's asking you to do. Here's the next generation science standard. Measure and graph quantities to provide evidence that regardless of the type of change that occurs when heating, cooling, or mixing substances, the total weight of matter is conserved. So when you look at this one, we're actually just talking about measuring and graphing are the verbs here. And these are lower level verbs. This is application and understanding. So you just have to make sure that you teach it to these lower levels of thinking. Kids need to be able to apply what it is they learned and the need to show that they've understood what they learned. But it's the, this particular standard is not asking students to be thinking at a higher level. Um, and so you don't have to necessarily generate questions on your assessments that are, are higher level questions. At the same time, I will say that if you're going to raise the rigor in your classroom, if you're going to be challenging students, then you need to be pushing some of these standards beyond what they're asking of students. So an example of raising the rigor on a content standard is this one right here, which is working with time and money, which is a, a common core math standard. It asks you to tell and write time from analog and digital clocks to the nearest five minutes using AM and PM. So this is just asking students to think it, to tell and write. Those are both lower level. Those are telling is understanding and writing would be um, the idea of ap applying. And so a question to determine mastery might look like this, where you provide students with this particular clock and you ask them to determine what the time is. And so they would have to write the time from the following clock. This one right here, where you give them a, a time on, an, on a, a digital clock and you ask them to determine whether it's AM or PM. All this, though this seems more challenging, it's not rigorous necessarily because there is a logical correct answer. A sure, a student could make an argument for maybe it's Alaska and so it's daytime all the time, so you don't know if it'd be dark outside, but those are kind of anomalies or rarities. And so the, the 99.9% .9 of students are going to answer um, AM in this case because it would be dark outside if it were 130. Here's one where students are having to create, but it's not asking them to create at a higher level. They're simply determining how what 545 would look like on this clock, and they have to put the proper shorthand and the proper longhand. Uh, but again, this is just applying what they have. Um, they're, they're writing time. They're telling time. They're, it's at the level. Could you push this standard to a higher level? You certainly could. So for example, for analysis where you have to break down information, what you would have are these four times on the left-hand column, and then you have these four events in the right-hand column. And the question asks students to categorize these times with the appropriate action. So it's basically matching. So if you look at 11.45 p.m., is that bedtime, lunch, dinner, or wake up? When, when is the logical one that you're gonna be doing? And so students would probably determine that that's usually a bedtime, even though it's not their bedtime. It is, it is out of the answers, it is the best possible answer. How they're analyzing here is they have to consider two sets of data. They have to consider the, the actual times themselves, and then they have to consider the actions that are taking place, and then they have to match those up. So this is, complex thinking. This is higher level thinking. This is asking, even though there is a definitive answer for this particular question, you know, students still have to work through the logic of it because a student can make an argument for a 355 is when I'm having lunch because I don't eat lunch at school. And so I, I eat right when I get home from school and that's kind of my lunch. And so they can make an argument for that. But at the same time, if they eliminate that 355, then when is it that they're having dinner? And so you have to you have to use the columns and logically put them in the correct place. But it is it is requiring kids to analyze the information for an evaluating. So you could give students these four clocks and ask them to make an argument for which one would be the best bedtime for you. And so students can personalize this, and it can be metacognitive for them, where they're actually saying, for me, you know, ten ten would be a great 
great uh, bedtime because I need to get, I have to get up at 7.15 in the morning. I need to get my sleep. So I need to make sure I'm in bed by a certain time. Other students could say, you know what? Uh, I'm a night owl. I like to stay up. I'm, you know, I'm very productive in the night. So I'm not going to bed till 10 till two. And so they'd have to make that argument. And, but students could pick any of these and make a good argument for that, that applies to them. They just have to be able to establish a criteria for why they're picking what they pick. They have to be able to explain that. When it comes to creating, so once students have learned the skill of telling and writing, you're asking them to invent a game where other people are going to be applying these, these skills. And so there's all sorts of possibilities that students can come up with. One example uh, that my students came up with was um, they came up with this card game that's similar to war. So in war, you turn over two cards, whichever is the highest wins, and the loser collects the, all the cards. And then the person who runs out of cards first is typically the winner. In this case, students have piles of cards in front of them and they turn them over and they have clocks like you see here. And you could determine, you could um, decide whether you want to put the times on it or have them figure those out themselves or whatever to, to increase the, the level of the game if they have to actually tell the time rather than it being told for them. Irregardless, they'll have to tell the time when you turn over a third neutral pile, which has a clock on here that doesn't have a time. And students have to be able to determine which of these two, the three o'clock, or the 1130 is closest to this particular time, which would be, uh, this is 1245. So obviously the 1130 is closer, that's the one that wins, you would give the cards to the three o'clock and so on and so forth. Because this is a game about time, the students came up with a 15 minute time limit. So the game is played for 15 minutes, whoever has the most cards at the end is the loser, whoever has the least cards is the winner. So students are having to create in order to teach this basic concept. So the million dollar question becomes, what does this look like in the classroom? How do I put into practice determining the mastery of whether students have learned at the level the standard is asking? And the answer to this is it comes in the questions that you ask. So the questions that you ask in class, both verbally and on assessments, written assessments and assignments, uh, are how you are measuring whether a student has learned and mastered this content standard. So, the, so what you have to look at is, are you asking questions at the level that the, the, the standard is asking students to be learning at? Because that's how they demonstrate what they've learned by answering these questions. And we'll get into we'll get into this in the next Todd talk, where we'll talk about how to write higher level questions and how to determine whether you're asking enough higher level questions in your class.